how are you? My name is Brandy Azirwe Valentine and I welcome you to yet again another episode of the Ugandan podcast where we get to discuss our government programs, projects and policies in relation to citizen programs, projects and policies. If you're Ugandan, you'll understand what I mean. Today, I have one of the best people in the building. Very good. He's going to give us an understanding of something we think we know, yet we don't know. But we have a little idea about, and now we shall know everything about it. We have Patrick Mugesha, a.k.a. Mugi, straight out of Innovate, La- Innovate Labs, and he's a co-founder. And he'll give us more about this. And this conversation leads us straight into World IP Day, how we celebrate and what, what, what are our takeaways as we celebrate this day. Welcome, Patrick. How are you? I'm okay. We are happy to have you here. Thank you. My pleasure, too. Are you ready to educate us about intellectual property? Absolutely. Yeah? Yes. But give us a brief about who you are so we can know you before we go to Google. Yes. Uh. Okay. Yeah, so thank you so much. And uh, uh, dear listeners, uh, good afternoon. Um, oh, good morning. Oh, good morning. Oh, good uh, evening. Wherever you are. Yeah. Oh, good evening. Um, uh, Patrick Mugisha is my name. Uh, A.K. Mugi. And um, uh, I'm the co-founder and managing partner at Innovent Labs Africa. And uh, with uh, more than 12 years' experience in the science, technology, and innovation space, and also working with the government uh, of Uganda, uh, recently uh, uh, was with the Ministry of Science, Technology, and Innovation, where I was working as a commissioner in charge of innovation and intellectual property management. Mm. Uh, so that has been my space for uh, a couple of years now. And uh, technically, I'm a synthetic organic chemist and also an intellectual property law. So you're, work, yeah. you're working IP as we speak. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so let's IP. get into it. Yes, what, yes. Is, uh, what is intellectual property? Yeah, to define IP, definitely you'd start from the fact that every natural person, yeah. I'm using the word natural person because today also machines can invent. Yes. And uh, machines are not natural persons. So for a natural person, you've got a mind or an intellect bit where you're able to come up with new ideas. So as you develop these ideas, definitely they can take different forms. And uh, some are going to generate ideas that are artistic. Some are going to be of a scientific in nature. And some of them are going to be literally in nature. For example... um, for uh, for authors of books, yeah, books and the poems. Ideas are go- exactly. Yeah. The musicians are going to imagine some of the lyrics that are going to come on board, and then as for dancers, yeah. they also have a take on their space. So all this aspect gives you an opportunity for you to know that every intellectual capital that a human being could potentially have can be translated into a form of property, okay, and now turns into intellectual property. So these are just the tangible outcomes of human ingenuity and creativity. Okay. That's IP. Uh, bef- I want us to get into the different forms of IP. Yes. But before we do that, what is the difference between IP and copyright? Well, copyright is a form of IP. <laughs> so generally, intellectual property, uh, how the system works, yeah. is actually categorized into two major sections. Yeah. Uh, one section is uh, what we refer to as industrial property. Okay. And uh, the other section is what we refer to copyright and neighboring or related rights. Yeah. So under industrial property, that's when we focus on aspects of patents, yeah. aspects of uh, industrial designs, yes. aspects of uh, utility models. We have uh, geographical indications. We've got trademarks trade secrets, and also what we call uh, integrated circuits layout or topographies. Mm. That forms part of what we call industrial property. Yeah. So, I mean, that name industry, why, I mean, you'd ask, why is it called industry? It's because its origin was actually based in the aspect of uh, the early industrial revolution, yeah. where countries or inventors, that time when there's a huge kind of like a drive to invent. I mean, I, I think that's when the so-called uh, common are saying that uh, uh, necessity is the mother of all invention. Of all because invention. of necessity, people have to invent and be creative. 
And so industry was because you come up with a solution, a technical solution to a technical problem which can lead to industry, industrial property. Yes. So that came in that regard. But for copyright, of course, it's just a bit you look at literally and artistic works. Yeah. And of course, this has evolved over time. So for the neighboring rights or related rights, is now these are the supporting mechanisms for copyright. Yeah. I write a lyric for a song. Yes. I need a dancer. Yeah. That one forms under what you call the performance rights yeah. or related rights. Oh. So, so if as yeah. a dancer I choose to dance on this song, yeah. Do I have rights to do you I You have a right because uh so if uh, if you are performing a song, uh, if if you're actually performing uh to a song owned by a particular copywriter, for example, who owns the ly- lyrics of the song. Now, in most cases, you end up having a form of agreement. Oh. Because you're actually trying to play out yes. or maybe endorse yes. his copyright yes. to the public. Yes. To bring fun. That's it. Uh-huh. So you, there's something for you. And uh, very common, maybe a case in point is um, uh, Ugandans, I believe, love watching cinemas mm. and videos. And definitely, when you look at when a, a movie is starting, yes. they tell you there's a starring, there's a co-starring. Yes. And then when it's ending... You see acknowledgements, director, yes, producer, yes, uh, sound recorder or the phonographers, extras, extras, wingman, absolutely, yeah. all those. So all those are the performer rights. Yeah. These are the people who actually support this particular aspect because this movie could be as a result of maybe a, 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 a novel yeah. that was actually Written adapted or translated into a movie. Yes. Yeah. You have actually. We're now on the same page. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but uh, please give us a. Uh, a brief review of IP systems around the world in relation to our country. Exactly. So, uh, so IP system. Maybe if I could uh, just maybe first define what an IP system is, mm. is that an IP system is just a framework of rewarding creativity, mm. rewarding innovation or inventiveness. Yes. So this system, in return, is that it presents uh, that uh, reward mechanism. You invent or you create something new. So what is that that should be granted to you in response to what you've actually done? That's why we come with this aspect of what you call exclusivity or temporary monopoly. So when you invent, in return, the state grants you some form of exclusivity for your invention. But in return, you also disclose Yes the details of your invention to allow knowledge to be expanded on after your invention because you can invent this product. Mm. Then once, you, once you're able to seek protection, they'll public, they're going to publish your work yes. and what your invention is all about to allow other people, third parties, to also read and know that, okay, so knowledge is taking this direction. So supposing... I want to also build on that existing knowledge. If that knowledge is not available, then another party cannot invent around that. So I'll give you the rights, exclusivity. Mm. In return, publish your work mm. or disclose. And so disclosure can be, maybe we may not talk about disclosure in depth here, but disclosure is basically the mechanism that govern. To what extent do you disclose? Yeah. It's governed by some legal frameworks. So in reality, an IP system is a kind of a, a tripod stand where you've got the inventor or creator mm. and also you've got the state yes. and you've got the public yes. because uh, the inventor or creator presents the work yeah. of his uh, 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 intellect. Yeah. Then the state grants him exclusivity. Yeah. Then the public is the end user to utilize that piece of work. But then also the public would be happy uh, to say that, okay, this man spent a lot of maybe millions or billions of Uganda shillings to do R&D, research and development, Mm. to come up with this product. So really giving him 20 years of exclusivity or temporary monopoly is good enough for him to recoup back his uh, uh, kind of like uh, expenses. and Investment and sleepless nights. Exactly. So that's basically how it works. So IP system also creates timeline. So different forms of IP have got different forms of timeline. Timeline in the sense of duration of protection mm. when that exclusivity exists. Yeah. Now, patents, for example, you'll have 20 years yeah. from the point of filing yeah. 
Yes. The day you walk to Uganda Registration Services Bureau, which hosts the National IP Office, and they say, I think I've got an invention I'm seeking to protect. From that day, the 20 years, as soon as you submit and they put you on the register, 20 years clock begins. And then you have to keep paying. Exactly. There are those annuity fees that you have to pay yeah. uh, to really maintain, we yeah. call them maintenance costs, mm. for you to actually have your patent valid in that space. Okay. Yeah. So how? what is the relation? In fact, apart from the fact that it is a reward system to yes. the to the innovator or how is uh, how is intellectual property linked to national development it does because uh, globally uh, uh, it's uh, uh, we've got um, what you call a uh, global indices yeah. that actually are able to to define uh, 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 to grade different countries and rank them on uh, how b the number of uh, ip filings they do in the different categories and also in that, there's also what you call the Global Innovation Index ranking, which is actually um, spearheaded by World Health Organ I mean, uh, World Intellectual Property Organization (WIPO), mm -hmm. which is actually the UN agency that oversees IP legal frameworks at the global space. Yeah. So it's, it's, I think it's one of the only uh, UN agencies which is profit making. Yes. WIPO. Yeah. WHO, maybe other UN agencies, they are not profit making, but these guys, they do make profits. Because they're helping you make money. Exactly, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, and that's why they're too rich yeah. as, as an organization. So now, when they're able to rank this, is also to show that um, uh, if to know that maybe let's say who was the uh, who was the highest filer of IP, it, there's a correlation because IP shows technical technological advancement of a country in a particular space. That's why you find that uh, nations that are uh, uh, kind of are ranked highly at the global innovation, they also have the highest IP filing in the world. Mm. Today, China is actually the biggest filer of IP statistically. Yet many years ago, they were actually not. And that's why the world was actually saying, no, 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 no. I think uh, issues of uh, 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 um, uh, IP infringement or something of that nature mm. is actually not being um, uh, being articulated at length. So by then, at the end of the day, is that they decided to now, uh, if at all they want to, to build a, a tech hub to be the key drivers of science, tech, and innovation globally, they knew intellectual property is going to be a key characteristic. And mm. from that, maybe last but not least, yeah. You've heard people talking about technology transfer. Yes. It's linked to IP. Yes. So when a country decides to invest on technology transfer, and Uganda, for example, mm. in the current National Development Plan 3, Uganda is so specific and became so strategic yes. in uh, taking on, shifting from the sector planning approach to the program-based approach. Yes. And one of the critical programs they actually put in place in the NDP3 is a program on Innovation, uh, 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 innovation and technology transfer and development program. Yes, that was critical because as much as the vision NDP three is focused on promoting industrialization, boosting household incomes, creating employment, tech transfer is the hub. You can't talk of industrialization right now. Uganda may not actually uh, kind of uh, take on a strategy to, to 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 spend lots of money on research and development. Yeah. We could take technology transfer as the easier route to industrialization because some of these technologies have already been undertaken by other countries. Yeah. It's a mechanism for us to buy this technology or borrow these technologies internally through licensing agreements and yeah. we get these technologies and you're able to go. So there's nothing that uh, would say that, uh, especially value addition in the agro space, machinery, equipment, technologies, they're everywhere. Yeah. So you don't need to reinvent the wheel as a country. But tech transfer is critical. But for you to appreciate tech transfer as a country, IP has to be well understood and well narrated to every player in the value chain. To every player in the yeah. value chain. Absolutely. So the, uh, I want us, now that we are talking about every player in the value yes. chain, uh, before we go to, I want to us to talk about the generation of IP. But before yes. we get there, what's the difference? It's a, I think it's like a trick question, but let's see where it goes. Yes. What's the difference between innovation mm -hmm. and invention? Perfect. Yeah. Now, invention, to begin with, is newness of knowledge. Yes. 
have invented. You've come up with something new, mm-hmm. something original. Now, patents, for example, a patent is characterized on three particular lines. One, novelty or newness or originality. Okay. Second is inventiveness. Now, inventiveness is, I can, uh, to a layman, is the wow effect. If, if you walked in this room and, and maybe, let's say, you saw uh, someone dressed in a certain dress mm. and you say, wow, chances are you've never seen that dress before. True. Now, this is based on your own jurisdiction and mind boundaries. Or it's not obvious to you to see someone putting on that kind of dress, mm. the Y effect, which you also call the non-obviousness. Yeah. Then you're looking at also industrial applicability. Mm. That invention, is it industrially applicable? Does it offer utility in the large space? Yeah. So now, so all patents are granted on the basis of what? Them being inventive. And nothing guarantees an inventor commercial success. You could be a startup exactly. for a really, really long time. Forever. Yeah. So you can have patents, a strong patent portfolio as a company, but you're not actually making economic sense out of your sense. Yeah. So at the end of the day, when you make that invention, which could be a product or a process, make its way to the marketplace, yeah. that becomes an innovation. Okay. Now, yeah. that, that makes sense. So, invert your Thomas Edison now. Yeah. There was We were only receiving light from the sun. Exactly. We have a bulb we now. We have a bulb, yeah. Innovation, yeah. Mercedes-Benz already exists, yes. and now you're making a convertible. So, there's exactly. the car, and you're just yeah. making like or an open basically reform. now from... Your, uh, Principally, you're taking that that idea from the mind to the lab, prototype it. The next thing is commercialize it. Commercialize. It has to reach the intended target in the market. Yeah. That invention will translate into an innovation. Okay. Yeah. Now, now that, that we know, yes. let's move into the value chain. Yes. yes. How do you generate and protect an IP? So, so basically, um, that takes us to what you refer to as the intellectual property value chain. And uh, so it's composed of four categories yeah. where you start with the generation of the IP, yeah. you protect the IP, you commercialize the IP and enforce the IP. Yes. Now, if we begin from, in principle, intellectual property is just like any other property, only that in this case, we refer to them as intangible assets. Yeah. For example, goodwill. <laughs> goodwill <laughs> is intangible. Yeah. If today I told you to quantify uh, just maybe this could be maybe a commercial break. Yeah. Even love. Yeah. Now, is love tangible or intangible? It depends. If you buy me a car and buy me a few things, that could be tangible. But Meaning if love, you're just telling me you love me, yeah. it is intangible. It doesn't bring money on the table. Yes. So, the, so, so clearly, that's what we're talking about here. So IP is intangible, but the way you handle it and manage it along the chain, yeah. you translate it into a tangible mode. Yes. Yeah. So now, at generation is... Having talked previously that there are different forms of IP. Now, how you generate uh, a trademark, for example, yeah. is because you're in commerce and you're producing maybe uh, uh, pineapple juice yeah. and you want to have a logo that can actually differentiate your pineapple juice from similar pineapple juice sellers in the marketplace. Yes. So it's a unique logo, so you've generated so. In principle, how do you generate it? First, there's something you want to put into commerce. Mm. Then you're going to get a graphic designer. Yes. Yeah? For yes. example, yeah. this is on board with you. And that's why one of the key uh, uh, sectors that we're actually going to push for yeah. to support moving forward are those players at NASA Road. The, guys save us a the lot. Day <laughs> they, the day we tell them how important IP is to them. Yeah. Even a mere wedding card, you'll pay a premium yes. to have them design for your wedding card or an order for your wedding service. Mm. So how does it work? You'll tell them that, please, you see, uh, I want to do this. I want to, this is what I want. So you sit with him like 30 minutes, one hour. Yeah. He designs for you. Once he designs to you, 
ordinarily you will take and tell me now print for me mm. like maybe a thousand copies put even on my t-shirt put even on my t-shirt to get <laughs> now what is now failing both parties is that number one, you who's actually the client you don't know why your ip stops or where it starts and where it stops the guy who's producing for you this the graphic designer does not know where his ip starts and where it stops ordinarily this ugandan should know that if i go and actually um on my wedding day i call a photographer that mm. please come and cover my wedding yeah come and cover my kwanjula or kwinjira mm. yes on your budget you've put 5 million ah that's too much okay no some uh, uh, photography uh, yeah okay oh yeah, yeah that's enough that's example. enough yeah then this guy will come take the pics and you'll pay him yeah. after remember under copyright whoever fixes the idea in a fixed medium yeah. owns the copyright yeah ordinarily even before we talk of the money the photos they will take on your wedding day or they took on your wedding day the copyright belongs to the guy who took the photos not me who not made you. the request but it's not my you. wedding it's your wedding yeah. but in principle if tomorrow this guy took your photos and put them on a billboard mm. in arizona <laughs> You'll complain and say, but no, that's my wedding. So no, but I'm the one who took the photos. Yeah. Then you'll go into you'll be thrown into a negotiation for someone to say, but I paid you five million mm. to capture the moment. Mm. But then there was no any clause mm. of who owns the IP mm. in your negotiation. So I should have like as I get a photograph exactly. and a video. Yeah, tell him that after sign here that you're actually going to confer back yeah. this IP rights yeah. in form of copyright back to me. Mm. So you should not use these photos anywhere without my permission. Yeah. Majority of Ugandans Africans don't do that. Yeah, you yeah. find your picture in front you of find uh, everywhere. Uh, exactly. Yeah, so, yeah but yeah. some people do yes. like I've, I've worked with different photographers mm. who give you what you ask for. Yes. If you ask for a hundred copies yes. and even if it took 500, yes. that yes. is your business. Exactly. You give you a hundred copies yes. and close fire. Yeah. But you see now, if now the guy who takes the photos or designs for you something understood what potentially he could earn by playing hardball and said no i'm going to take the 5 million but add 3 million for me to transfer yeah yeah the rights of creating this work and fixing it because i did it yeah. it's not you yeah they'll be making more money okay so now so gener- that's trademark i just use as an example how you generate the trademark yeah then let's say for some, like a, a industrial design for example Look around this studio. All this, the cameras, the TV, the 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 the, the, the wrist watches, the phones. Just that appeal, aesthetic appeal or beauty appeal that attracts you to an iPad to buy it. Yeah. That outward. That's industrial design. Yeah. So someone will sit down and design this. Yeah. You walk along these uh, roads and you see guys who make furniture do metal fabrication. Ugandans do amazing stuff. Yeah. They create a lot of industrial designs on a daily basis. But unfortunately, these industrial designs are not protected. Mm. They do not get any copy. So they have designed, they have generated the IP. The next thing now is that once you've generated the IP, you need to protect it. Yes. Protection gives you that exclusivity. Yes. And once you get it, then the exclusivity gives you the timeline to enjoy yeah. and uh, benefit from the economic returns that lie within that particular IP. Yeah. A patent it's 20 years. Yeah. Copyright is your li- literally rights for example you write a novel your entire life and 50 years after your death. Yeah. Copyright. So you can imagine if you wrote a very good book. All of us read about Chinua Chebe. Chinua Chebe things fall apart. That man his estate is still enjoying works of his copyright works. Oh. And even 50 years after his death the next of kings will still enjoy this mm. and when you actually write books together co-joint authorship mm. it's actually more sweeter already because already. yeah because what happens is that uh the, 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 now uh, uh they start counting the lifetime of the end author co-author so after he dies that's when now the 50 years begin counting oh. so if you are five all of you will begin making money then imagine after you die the 50 years for all of you yeah. it's a long time yeah then you've protected it now how do you protect it of course in all jurisdictions there are uh, legal entities that are supposed to handle aspect of uh, protecting ip 
Mm. In Uganda, it's URSB that hosts the National IP Office. Mm. The so Uganda Registration, Registration Services, Services Bureau. Yes. Now it's uh, located at George House yeah. uh, on, on Georgia Street. Uh, and so basically, uh, so basically what happens mm. is that um, uh, you will present what you want to protect. And of course, there are legal frameworks in Uganda today that govern the different forms of IP. Mm. There's one that governs industrial property. There's one that governs trademark and also trade secrets. Then also copyright. All those, they're actually, they're, they're present. Those legal frameworks are there. So there are regulations that tell you how do you protect? What do you need to protect? How do you fill that form to make sure you seek protection? It's all best in that regard. Yeah. You protect. After you've protected, so what? Yeah. You own the IP, have a patent. They give you that uh, a patent. You're a patent holder. Yeah. Uh, you're given um, a, a, a utility model certificate. You're a happy man. You go under, make noise all over the media that, hey, I'm a patent holder. Yeah. So what? Yeah. If you cannot make money out of that particular uh, IP that you own, then it's useless. It's, it's not so useful. That's why now the commercialization <laughs> phase comes into perspective now. You can commercialize your AP in different forms. Once I own a patent, because I've got rights and uh, benefits that accrue from it, I can decide to assign it. Mm. Assignment is outright sell. Yeah. I own the patent. We negotiate a million dollars. Brandy, I give you my patent. Yeah. Now, you become the owner of the patent, but you do not brand. You do not become the inventor. I'm just an owner. Yes. Yeah. But the rest. Exactly. So yeah. uh, that's why sometimes you find that um, uh, inventorship does not mean ownership. Ownership. That's why, if you worked in a university, for example. Yes. And you are a researcher and you invented a, a new product that yeah. guarantees. Patenting, you own the patent now. Yeah. You're just an inventor. <laughs> the so actually the university in most cases will own the IP because they actually become the applicants. They're the ones who actually finance the acquisition of that IP. They funded the research you're actually handling. They give you the consumables, airtime data, internet. They even everything. motivate you they when motivate you're almost you reaching when that. You're almost exactly. So <laughs> that's basically what happens. So in most cases, you'd find I'm an inventor. But I'm not the owner of the IP. Yeah. But I need to be acknowledged. Yes. University has to have a mechanism of a benefit sharing. Mm -hmm. So how much does the inventor get? How much does the university get? How much does the department or the school or college department mm -hmm. that uh, the research is working in, what is their stake in this game? Mm -hmm. That's the whole point. So commercialization. The other thing could decide is, I will license it. Yeah. I don't want to sell. I want to remain with ownership, but I want to license. You've got a company X. He's got a company Y. I'll give you, I'll negotiate with you a license. I negotiate with him another license. So there's that bit, go into sole licensing. There's that bit of a, a non sole licensing where like a, I retain some form of ownership, yeah. but through licensing, I, you are party to this. So yeah. I give you part of the licensing. So you'll be paying me some royalties, yeah. either on a quarterly basis, by annual or at the end of the year. Licensing. Yeah. And I think you can also donate. Mm. Oh yeah, you can donate. that's it's part a of, good thing. It's part of commercialization. Mm. Because like now, if for example, researchers are publicly funded yeah. by taxpayers' money, the question is, how do you then go ahead and you say that um, you're going now, once you commercialize, you set up an entity that it's all yours. Government should have a stake mm. in financing this. And also when it comes to the returns, government should also have a stake. That's commercialization. The last bit is enforcement. Yes, the fourth. The, the, the fourth, the fourth one. one. Yes. So, IP is a product. It's a form of property. I don't think... Do you sleep in your house with the gate open? How? Good, quest, good response. Why do you close? For security. Absolutely, because you want to enforce your privacy. Yes. In house. Yes. It's so my, in the same way, my perimeters. Exactly. I don't expect you here Absolutely. after this time. Yes. yes. So in the same way, you, the owner of the IP, you have to police your own mm. IP to make sure that you enforce. However, where the state comes into perspective, also the government or the state has a role to play. Mm. Remember the tripod yes. model. Yes. The yes. state as one of the key actors, they're the ones who confer upon you the exclusive rights. So tomorrow, if you went and you, you accused uh, company X of infringing 
on your IP. Where you are going to run first would be the national IP office, yeah. which is an entity of the state. Yes. So to come and say that, no, I want to invalidate this patent on the grounds that I've realized that this guy actually claim one of this patent, of his invention, is part of prior art. It's yeah. not novel. <laughs> I've seen it. I saw it before. Yes. He released his work. Yeah, so exactly. So there's no way. So we need to invalidate this, yeah. this patent. Yeah. So basically, that's what happens. Yeah. So enforcement, you really need to, you have to keep checking. That's why you find having a strategy, an IP strategy in-house for companies, micro SMEs, mm. the private sector, even research institutions, is because you need to know what do we need to do when we are generating our IP? Mm. What do we need? to do when we are protecting, protecting our, IP. our IP. What do we need to do when you are commercializing? commercializing? What do we need to do when we are enforcing, enforcing. our IP rights? Yeah. So it's a strategy, a full strategy. And that's why um, with our Innovent Labs Africa, we are trying to bring a niche yeah. offering yeah. into the marketplace today. Well, like, uh, we're actually focusing on uh, four major areas yeah. in terms of uh, service delivery. Yeah. Uh, this morning, uh, uh, the gentleman who are talking about the BPO and Innovation Council, uh, from BPO and Innovation Council. It was very clear that uh, a trade seems to be top of the agenda. Yeah. Boosting innovation and creativity, employment among the youth, yeah. and Uganda is high on the agenda. But I can assure you, all these things can be said. But if there's no one who's going to have that enabling environment yeah. to make it happen, yeah. and have the key players who really know the actual needs, ultimate needs, and empathize yeah. with the key actors, it's all going to waste. So that's why we decided to focus on uh, four major areas mm -hmm. as Innovent Labs Africa is number one. Let us look at innovation and tech dev value chain management support. Okay. We looked at uh, standards, support, advisory for product and system certification. Now, we are not UNBS. UNBS has the mandate as a standard body and to ensure consumer safety and compliance. For us, there are startups there who want to do manufacturing, but they don't know what standard is relevant for me? Yeah, me as me, how do I, what do I manufacture and exactly. what should I do? Exactly. And how do I put that uh, quality control or assurance mechanism in-house for me to make sure I reach to the marketplace? Mm -hmm. Then, of course, we look at uh, intellectual property value chain management support. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, uh, we're looking at a public-private sector scaling of innovations. Mm -hmm. So really, that's what we do offer maybe. And uh, maybe just to, to cut the long story short, uh, maybe you could be looking at a case study why enforcement is very important. Um, uh, one of the, I'll, I'll give two case scenarios. What? Just two. Yeah. Just two. The first one is um, uh, talking about now, we know about the, the herbal medicine. Yeah. Indigenous knowledge, for example. Yes. I know maybe many people here in the room are consumers of uh, a traditional knowledge. Yeah. Uh, you feel pain here rather than going to maybe uh, uh, Mulago, you say, ah, let me go to the other place. Uh, they know my problems. Yeah. Indigenous knowledge. Yeah. But then, one of the case study was, please go to the hospital. We Let's all, <laughs> like, we all eat um, uh, uh, chinzali, that's turmeric. Yeah, turmeric. Turmeric, its origin is in, uh, uh, in Asia, India. Mm. But so they eat it, a lot of it. And uh, they use it as a, uh, a cuisine, uh, culinary in, in the different cuisines. And it does also have got uh, medicinal uh, benefits. Mm. And one of them is wound healing. Mm. Wound healing as in you cut yourself, maybe put a little bit of turmeric, yeah. and you're able to do what? To actually enhance the healing of that. So one university in the US decides to file a patent yeah. for wound healing properties of turmeric. India stood out and said, no, you cannot. They went to the USPTO, that is the United States Patent and Trademark Office, seeking invalidation of that patent <laughs> on the grounds that wound healing properties of turmeric, it's as old as mankind. Yes. It's knowledge that was known before. And the good news is that, of course, India didn't go as an individual. It went as a country, presented their issue. They said, we want to fight for our rights. Because had they allowed that patent to be granted, then they would never have used that make condiments or maybe some herbal remedies from turmeric. So the patent was invalidated. Yes. So that is enforcement. Yes. First, you need to know your space and know that, no, 
what is yours you have to fight for it yeah and another one is maybe what should also encourage uh, researchers when you're doing research projects at times you become uh, very rigid on the outcomes of the results that you generate normally one of the common and top selling medicine in the world today is viagra yeah everyone knows the, every ugandan i think who's of age knows what viagra does this essentially it's supposed to treat erectile dysfunctions yeah. among men but its story how it was arrived at is quite amazing yeah. the particular pharmaceutical company when it had initially that was not their line yeah. the intention was not to make viagra yeah they actually working on a particular medicine to actually handle it was blood pressure yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, that kind of a thing but then as they did what to call clinical trials clinical trials is course you need it's a stage in drug discovery yeah so when they're giving this jaribu samples to men and of course what happens is that when they give you the sample they'll come and collect it back yes and they'll ask for your and feedback they'll ask you for feedback yeah. some gave feedback but they didn't want to return yeah why because they said no they were asking asking for more yeah do you have more samples why they realized it has got another effect yeah the pharmaceutical company changed its course took erectile dysfunction it was the first drug to hit a 5 billion dollar mark all right so uh, mugi yes. 26th epo is marked as world ip day yes. what are the take homes for uganda this world ip day for 2022 yeah so uh the the theme for this year mm. theme for this year is uh ip and the youth yes uh definitely that uh, depicts that uh, the youth have got a significant role to play yeah. in the global ip landscape yes and why is that the case i mean top brands today globally here talk of facebook the uh this other uh, 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 bigger bigger brands majority of them these ideas were actually created by the current founders when they were actually in their youth phase yes so meaning tapping into the the creativity and the ability to innovate among the youth is critical and that's why i think it has attracted a lot of uh, a, a global kind of like a, a response from even wipo the leading agency for uh, for ip so as uganda definitely traditionally uh the 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 entity that uh, leads this phase is usually or the chief celebrant in a particular countries usually the national ip office yes. so we expect this time round uh it won't change much it will still be uganda registration services bureau but now innovent labs africa we've decided to kind of like a coming from the private sector player yeah. as a private sector player what can we do as well to actually commemorate mm. this particular day which is focusing on the youth yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so be uh, we'll be hosting webinars on uh, on uh, on monday starting on monday 25th yeah. and also engaging uh, on some uh, media uh, uh, shows engagement uh, this is being one of them for example yeah. and then on 26th the climax we shall be able to really uh, engage youth from different spaces especially innovators in yeah. particular to really share with them more about ip yeah. so as a country definitely I don't know which other private sector player will be coming on board but at least this is the journey we are starting as uh, Innovent Labs Africa mm. to take this forward and be a critical player in this space from the private sense mm. yeah yeah and also the fact that it focuses on young people you got to give it to them these guys yeah. have been working yeah. they try to see what they can do exactly. to add a block onto their country exactly. so I'm glad that even it's a global it's sensation global. Exactly. Yes, yeah, so it's good. So what's the role of IP in promoting youth innovations and creativity? So exactly. Like one and, or two points. Um, uh, uh, so one the youth form a huge space in terms of uh, the global population today. Yeah. Uganda as a case study, we know the youth are uh, tap close to about 60% yeah. of the population. Um, so this thing of worrying that uh, <laughs> the, the, the children are the <laughs> leaders of tomorrow. <laughs> it gives us joy that it we are the leaders of tomorrow, of tomorrow. Yeah. but now how do we get leaders who are actually skilled yes. and empowered yes. to be leaders who can actually be sustainable so i think how by supporting them in their uh, skilling processes yeah. when they're given the right skill sets certainly they you'll have enabled them to innovate and create yeah. so as a country i think uh, we've uh, taken different strides 
and uh, there's a lot of a commitment from the state. Looking at sectors like, for example, ICT, yeah. there's a lot that is happening in supporting um, innovators, the youth, to actually be able to to be supported either financially or in terms of skill sets. But also now, coming from the private sector also now, we are going to carry this because through public-private partnership that we are trying to force and forge mm. as Innovent Labs Africa is to make sure that with our expertise from the private sector in this space, who are the public sector players who can engage to make this work? Because achieving the ultimate vision 2040 is not only the public sector game. Yeah. Different actors are going to come on board. Yeah. I think that's why we are really so uh, certain and uh, comfortable and contented to know that if we are given an opportunity, then I think we'll, we are also the youth. Uh, maybe me have just left the youth bracket a few years, uh, a few years ago, months. But I think uh, uh, we have what it takes to support the state yeah. in uh, equipping the youth with the necessary skills they require, yeah. both when those were in academia, post university, and pre employment for them to actually have the skills that they require yeah. to make their lives comfortable. I'm glad this has come from you, yes. from you to God's ears, from yes. you to the minister's ears. Yes. And also like the permanent secretary has just been yes. going, uh, Dr. Amina Zawede, yes. she has been going back and forth on this whole issue of we all need to bring what we bring to the table yeah. and make and allow that it's one yeah. table, the Ugandan table, and how do we make it better? Uh, and that's, uh, I mean, I definitely I'm in total agreement with that because uh, Uganda is big yeah. and it belongs to all of us. Yes. So for us to build it, it doesn't take one person yeah. or one entity. So let us put our strengths together. My strength will complement your weaknesses. Yeah. The reverse is true. Yes. And I think yeah. we should have a better Uganda. Mm. That's what I'm certain, with God's help. Yeah. yeah. We are better together. Yeah? Exactly. Yeah. That's okay. It, yeah. it has really been a pleasure having you. Thank you. Mugi, a.k.a. Yes. But his full name is Patrick Mugisha, please. Yes. <laughs> and uh, talking about intellectual property has actually been brain brain busting for yeah. me because these are things we talk about. We we think we know. Yeah. But then you're not sure to what extent do you know? We yes. become the same. We, we become like the photographer <laughs> on NASA and the the person who yes. wants the work. You don't know yes. where. And yeah. I'm glad we get to do this. Mm. Please share your social media handles yes. uh, with the people. What's yeah. your at on Twitter? Yeah, uh, at uh, JP Mogi one. Yeah. 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 And uh, what, what, just, yeah. yeah, one word, what, what is the line you live by? A quotation or something that you live by that inspires everyone? No, the thing is that uh, 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 strategic partnerships is the way to go. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you live by. Yes. That means your social capital is your, your, your network is your net worth. Big time. Yeah. And I've created one just here. Yeah. So. We're good to go. Well, you can add and be part of our network by reaching me at Valentine Brandy and also reach out to the ministry at M-O-I-C-T at underscore U-G and let's continue this conversation and let us know what else you'd want to have, have you want us to discuss in the Ugandan podcast. I've been your host, Brandy Valentine Azirwe and uh, we have talked about IP and I hope you get to intellectualize your property. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Bye. For God and my country, Bye. Thank you. I am a blaze. A blaze graced by Facebook, Twitter, and all I see today. See, I do not remember when it all began, but to me, it started as a lucrative incentive to chat with that girl who sat next to me but was too shy to say, hey, this thing you call social media for a little boy born on the crisp of the new millennium running away from the traumas of a real life into a haven of novel interactions finding a world of existing and exciting potential this nuclear bomb of free information feeding us a steady diet of lies and personally tailored distractions with zero to no privacy, no modesty, no privacy, a leading distributor of anxiety until it cuts you and breaks you and cuts you and breaks you and cuts you and breaks you, and breaks you into so many irreparable pieces. I am a blaze, a blaze graced by the people I see today. I mean, how many of us have forgotten how to simply live? How many of us have forgotten how to live simply? How many of us have forgotten how to be better than what the world might shape us into? See, we have to slowly go back into the basics of ourselves and decide to live a marvelous simplicity, a simplicity that needs no filter to be special, a marvelous simplicity that needs no caption to look happy, a marvelous simplicity that needs no trending hashtags to remain in all of our hearts, a marvelous simplicity that needs no fake lighting to to have a perfect sunset. 
So I wish to live simply, I wish to simply live, I wish to live simply and comfortably and return to my roots without the dark Twitter bad clouding my every thought and judgment. I choose, I choose to be remembered by raw, simple authenticity. I am a blaze. A blaze, a blaze, graced by the fire of the hope I see today, the hope I see in a new generation, bound not by prejudicial bias, but bound not by prejudicial bias, bound by shared dreams and aspirations, dreams, dreams I once saw in my father's eyes before they started fading into a cynical mistrust for human nature. Dreams a young boy dares not to hold Dreams, dreams a young boy dares not to hold Dreams breaking cycles with haikus Dreams not in my bed but in my head Dreams filled with passion to uplift a great nation Dreams of a human being, a human being You are a human being You are human You don't exist inside a machine You, you are worth more than your follower count Your popularity, your lack thereof See, there is more to life than what you point your camera at or what your camera points at you. Because the best moments in life are those that cannot be captured through a lens. The best moments cannot be recreated or stretched into a smile. The best moments are those that cannot be faked for a pose and posted for attention or views. The best moments are inspired by the people you love, the family you choose. The best moments do not have to happen tomorrow or yesterday. The best moments are happening right now. So I am a blaze, a blaze, a blaze, a blaze. I am a blaze, graced by the anxiety I see today. I am a blaze in a world where everything is faked with propaganda and purposeful dissemination of information to confuse the wise. A blaze in a world where the greatest gift you could give yourself would be that of a quiet mystery and pleasant anonymity. In a world where the machines we make have a better solidarity than the humans who make them with hypocritic integrity. In a world where you exist but you seem not to fit so this is a message to you you who's feeling exhausted you 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 has that one application you've been failing to delete you who has been too afraid to remove yourself from this unwinnable contest you you who wishes to love not the people on a screen but the people whose lives you in you this is your message to do it to log off sign out Take a breath, take a breath and experience the sensations of uh, wherever you are and whoever you are or whoever you with or whatever time zone you're in. This is a message to appreciate the natural beauty inside you and all around you. Take off, take off, take off all the extra baggage for just a day. Just a day, just a day to let all the worries go away. Just a day to pray and dwell not in the shame of the burdens around you, but in the goodness that stands still, despite of the great evil in the world, the goodness that will never cease from our hearts. Be that goodness. Stand by your values, stand by your values and find fulfillment in relationships, find fulfillment in friendships, enjoy the little moments, enjoy the little moments and spread love, spread love wherever you go, wherever you go, spread love like MTN, wherever you go, leave a smile wherever you go, even if it isn't enough to make your follower count rise, stop the lies and burn down the pride, be humble and let your legacy not be a goodbye. Let your legacy be an inspiring, happy lullaby to the next generation and a new cycle commences. <laughs>